How is it going guys? So today I've got a slightly different video. You may have already noticed I'm not out and about, I'm not out filming animals, I'm sat in the spare room in the office and today I'm going to talk a little bit about my career so far. We're at a point in the year where people will have just got their A-level and their GCSE results and may be considering their next steps or perhaps you even just started going to university and you want to know how after university you can progress to get a career in conservation. So today I'm going to share some of the tips and some of the tricks that have helped me to get a career in conservation. I I currently work for the Essex Wildlife Trust as a coastal ranger and I've had a few different roles before that including university so I'm going to talk about my school life, university and my career so far so hopefully you'll find something in this video that helps you out. My name's Adam and welcome to Naturescope. So let's go back to my high school days. In high school I was quite good academically, I absolutely smashed my GCSEs, I got like 13 A to C's, it was absolutely ridiculous. But then I got to A levels. Now I'm not ashamed to say that I completely flunked my A levels. I failed everything. I did biology, psychology, geography and IT and I failed all of them but IT and IT was a BTEC so the others were exams and IT was fully coursework and I completely failed them. I think I got like two U's and a D. Now once that had happened I thought it was the end. I'd always wanted to go into marine biology. I absolutely loved the ocean and I thought that was the end of my career, I thought I was done. But you will hear people tell you that those grades don't matter, and it's true. So in the second year of my A-levels, I ended up going all over to coursework. So I did a BTEC in Applied Science, and I continued with that BTEC in IT, and I ended up getting enough UCAS points to get me into Aberystwyth to do a degree in Marine and Freshwater Biology. So during my time at Aberystwyth, I got to start learning some of the skills which would go on to help me in my career. I got to learn lab skills, how to properly use a microscope, how to do dissections and a whole wide range of experiments. I got to develop field work skills, I got to go out onto College Rocks which is one of the best rock pools in the UK and Inneslas Salt Marsh which is again one of the most amazing salt marshes in the UK and we got to do field work using quadrats and identifying and finding animals out in the field. We also learnt a wide range of desk-based skills, so scientific report writing and how to properly reference using things like GIS software, which is mapping software, which is really, really important in the scientific world, as well as statistical analysis softwares. I ended up not doing too great at university, and I came out with a 2-2, which is the third best you can get. So there's sort of four ranges you can get at university. There's a first, a 2-1, a 2-2 two, two, which is the third best and then a third so I came out with the third best one which most people would say isn't that great. Looking back at my time in Aberystwyth I probably didn't make the most of the opportunities that were given to me. When you go to university you'll get emails and people will talk to you and give you opportunities to do things away from the actual university course itself to gain some practical experience and I perhaps didn't take as many of those opportunities at Aberystwyth as I should so that's my first tip is take every opportunity you can because you might just learn something or make a contact meet somebody that will help you later on down the line. So I then went to the University of Essex for a one-year master's course in tropical marine biology and I probably learnt more here in that one year than I did in three years at Aberystwyth. What really really helped me with this course is that there were no exams. It was entirely coursework based and we did such a range of coursework. We did reports, we did videos, we did newspaper articles and so so much more that really really benefited me and allowed me to learn and expand my skills. This was when I also started taking more opportunities. So I got the opportunity to volunteer with CFAS, who are the Centre for the Environment, Fisheries and Aquaculture Science, I think. And I got to go out and net with them. So we'd walk into the water with big nets and we'd look for rare species of fish and things like that. I got the opportunity to volunteer as a scientific advisor for a theatre production. Now this is a theatre production called Flood and it's currently touring the UK as I speak so I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So when I left the University of Essex I came out with a merit which is the second best grade you can get so I'd upped my level sort of one from when I did my undergraduate degree at Aberystwyth. Now I've really really brushed over my university and school career so if you have any questions about them drop it down below because even though looking back on them they're really really important, they don't actually matter too much to me now that I've got some career experience behind me, but if you have any questions like I say drop them below. So I then left the University of Essex and this was during the height of lockdown one of Covid and being from Wolverhampton which is a very very central city in the UK, 
there was not really any opportunity for me to go out and gain some paid experience or even voluntary experience in marine biology. I sort of had to compromise with myself and I got a retail job at Card Factory to tide me over whilst I did this and I met some amazing people there. It was one of the best teams I ever worked for. Um, incredible people and I'm really glad I ended up doing that because it tidied me over financially but I also got to gain some skills, you know, talking to people, um, enforcing COVID guidelines which was really important at the time but not so much now. Um, money handling, just various different things, even though you don't think they do, actually help you in a conservation career. Now this is where probably my second top tip comes in. Because it was COVID, there was nothing I could really do to help, directly help, my conservation career and my career goals with that. So what I decided to do was I started this YouTube channel. Now this was evidence for me that during the two years of pandemic I was doing something. I wasn't just sat around aimlessly applying for jobs and not getting anything back. I was actually going out there, taking some time and doing something away from my career because I wanted to and I love making YouTube videos. It showed employers that I have another feather in my cap because now I can edit videos, I can talk confidently in front of camera, I can, you know, show evidence of scientific communication that I can talk to a wide range of people and these are just four of the probably hundreds of skills that I've managed to gain from making a YouTube channel. Anything you can do to make yourself stand out or to continue to better yourself during those down periods where you don't have a job or are maybe struggling to find employment will benefit you massively. Whether you just go out and learn a new software, maybe you learn some GIS mapping software, you learn a new statistical analysis software, or you know, learn to do something else, whatever it is, as long as it benefits your career and you can go into an interview or go into a job application and say, during the time that I have been unemployed, I have learned this, this, this and this, that stands you in really, really good stead. And unfortunately, a lot of people I went to university with didn't do that and they're still struggling to get jobs because they've been out of university for three years and have done nothing in that time to benefit themselves. So alongside working at Card Factory, starting up NatureScope and learning a few other bits and bobs to help me, I was throwing out job applications. Now, like I said, I'm a marine biologist who was living in the city of Wolverhampton, which is about as central as you can get. So I had to make a compromise and that's probably tip number three. I've always been really, really focused that I want to work in marine biology, but there are other skills that you can gain which would help you to do that. So I ended up working as an ecologist. I traveled all around the UK, conducting protected species surveys on a wide range of animals. So every day I got to work with animals like bats, Badgers, newts, reptiles, snakes, lizards, mice, and so, so many more. I actually made a YouTube video about this whilst I was doing the job, and I'll link that in the description and at the top of the screen. But I learned so many skills which would go on to help me. And I also gained some practical paid fieldwork experience, which is really, really hard to get here in the UK. Now, the reason I said I had to compromise was because this was quite clearly not marine. I wasn't working with animals in the ocean or working in like the sea itself. I was traveling across the country, usually working at inland sites. So like forests, fields, things like that. But I still gained fieldwork experience. I still got to work with wild animals. I still saw some incredible things and got to meet some people which have gone on to help me later on in my career. So don't be afraid to compromise. I see people often with a really really one-track mind. I am going to do marine biology or I'm going to do zoology or whatever it is and they're solely focused on that. When if you look just outside that little box that you're living in you might find a job or a role that's still incredibly relevant and will help you. So don't be afraid to compromise and maybe switch over to something that's still relevant but not exactly what you want to do long term. I did field ecology for two seasons. Field ecology is a bit weird because during the winter most of the animals you work with hibernate so you can only really work between the months of March and sort of late October and then from November, um, December, January and February there's not really much you can do so during those off periods I ended up going back to Card Factory working in retail with the same team I worked with before and that tidied me over and I got to continue developing those people skills that I developed last time I was there. And during my second season as a field ecologist about halfway through I was still applying for jobs this entire time. It was quite difficult because I was away from home a lot but I'd still try and put in an application or two a week to jobs that I really really wanted and I ended up putting 
putting in a job for a project called Next Door Nature with the Essex Wildlife Trust that I ended up getting. So I then left Wolverhampton and moved back to Essex after leaving there for a university and started working for the Wildlife Trust on their Next Door Nature project. Now the Next Door Nature project is a project that's going on across the UK and it varies sort of county to county but the gist of it is we meet with people on their doorstep and help them to create projects that benefit both wildlife and the local community. Now one of the main reasons I ended up getting this job is because of the things that I'd done previously to help me along. So this job obviously involved a lot of talking with people, communication skills. This YouTube channel really helped me develop my communication skills and speaking scientifically to an audience that may not be in the scientific world which is a really hard skill to develop so that really helped me. The people skills that I developed working in retail again really really helped me and as well as that scientific knowledge that I developed through the field work and through university all of that combined sort of allowed me to get this role so it just goes to show that even the things you don't think matter or the little things you do between jobs really can help you get a job later down the line. I did this role for about a year and there were some really really cool projects that came out of it projects where we put fruit trees into the centre of town project where we started to try and clean up rivers and local parks things like that I've done a few radio interviews um, um, a few newspaper things and a few YouTube things for the Essex Wildlife Trust YouTube. I'll link those down below. Feel free to go and have a look um, if you're really interested about the job or just Google Next Door Nature if you want to know more about the project in your area. Then about three or four months ago a job role came up in the Essex Wildlife Trust Marine Team for a coastal ranger and I went for it and ended up getting it. Um, so this is a role that sees me going in and around sort of uh, coastal nature reserves here in Essex and working on the projects that go on on those nature reserves but also helping to maintain the nature reserve for visitors and for wildlife. So this year I've been working on the Share Our Shores project which is a project where we promote and conserve our beach nesting birds so oyster catchers, little terns and ringed plovers. These are birds that nest on the beach that a lot of people don't even know exist so I've been helping to gather data about them, write a report on how they're doing, as well as promoting them to the community. So again, those community skills are coming in really, really strong. So I've been doing social media stuff, news interviews, things like that, to help try and promote these birds and how we can best help them whilst we're walking on the beach or, you know, just in general. And that is where I am now. I'm still doing that coastal ranger role. At the minute, it's a six month trial. So by the end of December, I'll find out whether I'll be doing it permanently or whether I have to switch over to something else or we'll wait and see. But I'm absolutely loving the job I've got now. And it's really great to look back and see how my roles and things I did between jobs helped me to get the role I've got now. Every single thing you do is kind of really beneficial later on down the line somehow. And I've been very lucky and very fortunate to get into the position I am. But I've also put in a lot of hard work and a lot of hours to make it happen. More tips I wanted to share that I didn't get to talk about during the whole career story. One of the things I did was I made an academic Twitter. This was a Twitter account that was solely made just for keeping up to date with environmental and marine biology things. Now a lot more came from this than I could have ever expected. Got to interact with fellow sort of academics, incredibly smart doctors and professors and you know, leading people in various different research fields. I got to read their tweets, see what work they're doing, you know, see what conversations they're taking part in, as well as sort of networking, getting myself out there, replying to stuff, asking a question, you know, they'll look at you, oh, who's this person? It might just stick in their head in the future. Twitter's also a fantastic resource for finding master's courses, volunteering opportunities, PhDs and jobs. There's several different accounts on there and organisations that will post their jobs. So you never know, you may just find your next opportunity on there. But another tip would be don't be afraid to knock on doors. If you see a project that you think's cool or you find somebody whose work you really, really love, email them, send them a DM on Twitter or, you know, in public and just ask what they're doing. Ask if there's anything you can do to help. You never know, it might just come up with something really beneficial for you. Even if it's just volunteering, it's still a fantastic experience for your CV and to build your skills. I know a lot of people who've gone and emailed people, knocked on a few doors and ended up getting roles because of it. And my final tip and probably the most important one is don't be afraid to fail. 
There were a lot of road bumps in my story, whether it was completely failing my A-levels, not getting the grade I wanted at Aberystwyth, Covid and not being able to do anything for almost two years. But there were certain things I did during that time that enabled me and benefited me for the next opportunity so I could go and take that and better myself even further. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit about my career story so far as well as taken something from the tips and my experiences that I've shared today. If you enjoyed the video leave us a like it really really helps us out. If you have any questions about anything I've spoken about today leave them in the comment section below. I sort of brushed over a lot of things because otherwise this video would have been way too long but any questions drop them down below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel to not miss any more future videos. Ben and Callum, the other presenters on the channel, are also going to do a video like this where they talk about their stories. Those guys have slightly different stories to me. One of them works in a university and the other one works in a laboratory, so they'll have different stories and different experiences to share. Thanks again for watching, I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>